what skills have you been developing? Have the skills that you've developed in your life so far made your life like a dream life or like a nightmare life? I'm going to talk to you about some skills that when you develop them, they can make you a millionaire and more. And so the millionaire skills, which I call skillionaire skills, in fact, those who know me know the name of my business is Skillionaire Enterprise LLC. In fact, we just got found out that we were in the top 10% of the Inc. 5,000 fastest growing businesses in America, right? Um, Number, I think number 426 or 427 out of 5,000 businesses with a 1,356% growth rate over the previous year. So it's just, it's just, it's just crazy town. Anyway, anyway, so when I'm talking about these skills, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about theory. I'm talking about something that actually works. So there are skills that, skillionaire skills that can help you really just navigate life at a higher level. So Let's first talk about the personal skills, and then we'll talk about the business skills. The personal skills are you need to be trustworthy. You need to be a person of character. And see, here's what's really interesting. Most people care more about who people think they are than they do about who they actually are. And what we have to do is we have to become so consumed with who we actually are that we could care less who people think we are. I love what the scripture says about Christ. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What mind is that? Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. In other words, he knew who he was. But then it says, but he made himself of no reputation, which means he didn't need you to know who he was in order for him to know who he was. So when you get to the place in your life where you know you who you are so much that you don't need anybody else to know who you are, you make yourself of no reputation, something amazing happens. That's when people start wanting to know who you are. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? And so when you become a person of character, again, no better example than Christ. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. That's what it says in uh, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, verse uh, verse 14 says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the father. And, and the, the interpretation of that is exactly what it says. But an application of that is this. When your word becomes your flesh, you can dwell among the people you gave your word to. When your word doesn't become your flesh, you have to hide from those same people. And so you told them that the check was in the mail and you didn't even have a checkbook or an envelope. And so the next time you see them, you try to hide from them. You told them that you were gonna be there because they said they needed you and then you didn't show up. So when you see them at Thanksgiving or the birthday party, you have to try to avoid them because you don't want them to bring up the fact that you are not who you purported yourself to be. And you don't wanna to have to think about the fact that you're not who you purport yourself to be. But then again, you're gonna find out again anyway, you're gonna see yourself every time you look in the mirror and you're gonna know that you are not a person of your word. So, so you have to be a person of character because you can't be a person of confidence unless you are a person of character. People who don't have character don't have confidence unless they're sociopaths or psychopaths. Right? So a person who does not have good character, they can lie as easily as tell the truth. It is because they, they're sociopathic, which means they have a social disease, or they're psychopathic, which means they have a psychological disease, and they might be a sociopathic psychopath because they just don't care about anything but the present moment. And they will lie in the present moment to get something that they don't deserve, regardless of the consequences in the future. And so, you, you're, here's the reality. You're not going to build, build a million dollar business like that. You may build, you might build a six figure business like that. But when the people that paid you the money that helped you make the six figures found out that you couldn't deliver on the promise that you made to them for the money, a bad reputation spreads faster than a good one. 
it, it's so interesting. People will ask me to do stuff, and they'll ask me to participate in stuff, and that doesn't match my brand. I'm like, I can't be a part of that. It doesn't match my brand. It took me 62 years to build this name. I'm not gonna destroy it by partnering with somebody who doesn't deliver on the promises. Or that you deliver on the promises, but your promises don't match my promises. Y'all picking up what I'm putting down? So, and, and so a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of business people are not confident because they don't have character. Now, what, is confi- what does confidence have to do with character? Well, um, the word confidence comes from the root word confide. So confide, the word confide means with trust. That's what it means. It means with trust. So, so when a person has confidence, they move with trust in themselves, right? If I have confidence in an outcome, it's because I, I trust the principles that promise the outcome. Are y'all tracking? And so it's, it's really interesting. Um, a good friend of mine, Brian, um, um, Brian Bowman, he and I were playing golf back in 2017 down in Northport, Florida. No, I'm not in Northport, in um, Port Charlotte. And we came up to the second hole, and there are these guys on the green. And they said, you guys can play on through, which means they're going to let you pass them because there were two of us and four of them. So Brian hit, and Brian's a great golfer. And he hit his shot, and then I got up and hit my shot, and my shot landed like three inches or four inches behind the flag and then backed up and went in the hole. And those guys on the green went crazy, Um, which has nothing to do with trust or confidence. Um, It was just a good memory. (laughs) It just kind of made me feel better about being here. Um, So um, my greatest fear in life, by the way, is to have a hole in one when I'm playing golf by myself. It's like, it's like, uh, uh, so anyway, anyway, if, but if it ever happens, I'm going to frame the ball and I'm going to name it my greatest fear in life. Okay. So, um, but anyway, Brian, Brian, Brian is a brilliant businessman and he came to me one day and he said, Myron, I got to ask you a question. I said, okay, cool. He said, you have more of a sense of certainty than any human I've ever met in my life. Is that something you teach? Hey, thanks for watching this video. I hope you're enjoying it, but I want to take some time to invite you to join us at the Make More Offers Challenge. The Make More Offers Challenge, we do it once a month where I invite a bunch of entrepreneurs or would-be entrepreneurs to come and have me teach them in detail the four moves that can scale any business. I want to invite you to join us on the Make More Offers Challenge. Click the link in the description below. You will be glad you did. Join as a VIP and make the rest of your life the best of your life. And now, back to the video you were watching. I said, no, I can't really teach it, but I can tell you where it comes from. He said, okay, where does it come from? I said, I already know what's going to happen. I'm like, what does that mean? (laughs) He said, I have this book, and it's filled with principles and promises and precepts and practices and prayers and prophecies that give me the ability to predict outcomes in the future so I can position myself on the path of prosperity so when the flow comes, I'm there buckets in hand. And so I don't trust in trust. I trust in the principles that God established and wove into the fabric of the universe as God's automation. Are y'all tracking? And so I don't have to wonder if I drop this pen, if it's going to fall. If I drop it not 10 times, is it only going to fall six and a half times? It's going to fall 10 times if I drop it 10 times. Why? It's a principle. Principles aren't going to change because you're you. Right? Principles don't care who you are. They don't care if you're a man or a woman. They don't care if you're black, white, Hispanic, Asian, polka dotted, pinstripe. They don't care because they're principles, which is one of the reasons why, by the way, I have to say this in a way that is, is more accurate. So, which is why, by the way, that over the entire span of your life, you don't have to be a victim unless you decide to be. Victimhood happens when you allow contributing factors in your life to become the determining factors of your life. And I'm not saying that you're not going to go through hardships and you're not going to face opposition, and you might even face oppression. But it's not, none of those things are a determining factor. Because had they, were they a determining factor, factor, like slavery in the United States would still be a thing. 
No, no slave would have ever been able to get free, right? No, no, no poor people would ever have been able to come rich if, if contributing factors were determining factors. How can you tell the difference between contributing factors and determining factors? All contributing factors are outside of you. And determining factors are inside of you where character lives, where trust lives, where confidence lives, where honesty lives, where keeping your word lives. Determining factors are on the inside where perspective lives. Contributing factors are on the outside. Are y'all tracking? And so, so the word confidence means to confide. Well, here's the problem. The reason you don't travel with trust in yourself is because you are the only person in the world who's heard every lie you've ever told. Yes, you broke your word to this person and didn't keep your promise to that person and then let that person down and this person down, but guess what? You've broken your word to yourself so many times in the past, you can't believe a word you say. So one of the skillionaire skills that's absolutely essential to building a long-term successful business into the millions and tens of millions and hundreds of millions of billions, or whatever your desired objective is, you have to be a person who is trustworthy, you have character. Okay, that's one. Character is one of the skills, but I'm gonna tell you another skill. Communication. You must become a better communicator. But I'm gonna give you an insight that you may not have. Until you become better at your internal communication, it's virtually impossible for you to become better at your external communication. So if the things that you say to you are off base, the things you say to other people can't be on base. It's, it's amazing how powerful words are. Words are so powerful that they are both the material and the tools that God used to make everything out of nothing. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. I am telling you, your ability and willingness to communicate will determine the quality and perhaps the quantity of your life. But you have to get better at internal communication. Your internal communication is going to be either leveraged or limited by your vertical communication. What does that even mean? Well, God told Moses, who was a stutterer, so he had a communication problem. March into Pharaoh's office and tell him, I said, let my people go. Moses, when I first read this, I thought this was the most ridiculous question I've ever heard. Moses said, who shall I say has sent me? Every time I read that, I wanted to coach Moses. Say, bro, that's not a good question. This, but it was a good question. I was confused. Moses was not confused. Like, what kind of question? Who should I say? Simply? Really? That's it? That's what you got? I would have said, what can I tell Pharaoh you said you're going to do if he said no? That's what I would have said, <laughs> right? That's what I would have said. But see, Moses understands communication better than I understood it. How's that? Because Moses understood that authority... Authority is always based on identity. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? That's why, that's why if, if the FBI comes to your house, they have to show you their badge and their ID. That's why, that's why, that's why police cars look like police cars and police officers wear uniforms. That's why people in the military wear uniforms, right? Because the, the authority that you have flows out of the identity that you have. But see, here's the problem. Most people don't know their identity because they don't know the identity. Who's the identity? The I am that I am. I want you to think about that. What does I am that I am say? It says everything. I don't, I don't, there are not two more powerful words in the English language than I am. Why? Okay. I have one more thing I want to share with you all about the skills, the people skills, and then we're going to have to do the business skills on a different day because if you all would listen faster, I could talk faster. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so, so there, really, interestingly enough, the, um, when, we talk about, when we talk about I am, why is it so, so, how can those words be so powerful? Here's why. Because in the realm of time, there's no such thing as the present. There's only the past and the future. As soon as I say now, it becomes then. So in the realm of time, we only have now and then. Or we actually have then and then. Because <laughs> now can't exist. It evaporates too fast. It exits stage right too fast. Now then, now then. Now, can you let me finish the word? Now then. <laughs> But in the realm of eternity, there's no such thing as the past or the present. There's, I mean, the past or the future. There's only the present, which is why God is the I am. Because eternity is the forever now, which is why God knows the end from the beginning, because the end is the beginning and the beginning is the end. And because we're made in the image of God, we have the ability to replicate that on a small scale inside of time. But God did it. On, the, on an infinite scale outside of time. Like, for instance, if you wrote, starred in, directed, and produced a movie, and you edited all the shots, you'd be a tired dude or lady. You'd be tired. But let's say it's a dramatic action comedy. That's what mine would be. <laughs> anyway. Every time it looked like you were going to die, the people in the premiere would be, <gasps> and you'd just be there all calm. Why? Because you know the end from the beginning. They're worried about you dying, but you're not worried about you dying. Why? Because you wrote the whole thing. You produced the whole thing. You directed the whole thing. So what's outside of time, what's inside the realm of time for them is outside the realm of time for you because you know how the movie begins in the middle, you know the middle, and you know the end. So... So because in the realm of eternity, there's only the present, present is powerful. I am is powerful. How powerful is I am? It's so powerful that I have to be hyper-intentional with every word that I say that follows I am. That's why I can't afford to say I am so stupid. Because when I do, I'm infusing my stupidity with the power of eternity. I'm such a loser. Don't do that. You're infusing your limitations with the power of eternity when you say that. I am broke. You can't afford to say that. Because you're infusing. You, 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 here's, you don't, I promise you, I promise you, if there's an area of your life that's not working, it is an area of your life in which you do not understand and are not applying truth. Period. And, and, and by the way, when I say working, that doesn't mean all hunky-dory because Ezekiel's life was working when he was laying on his side for hundreds of days and did, wasn't allowed to get up to go to the bathroom or to eat or do anything as a sermon illustration, which nobody was going to respond to. His life was working. He was, his life was working when his wife died and God told him not to mourn for her. So don't make the mistake of thinking that working means everything you go, goes the way you desire it to go. That can only be true when you are in alignment with your assignment and you are yielded to the king of heaven. Then and only then will you be okay when things are going the way they're supposed to go, even when they don't feel good. Are y'all tracking? So... We have to make sure we understand when I say I am, I have to say something powerful after that. I am an entrepreneur. I am successful. I am made in the image of God. I am, therefore I can. Are y'all tracking? That's how this really works. And so if, you're, if your vertical communication is not correct, then your internal communication is not going to be correct. And if your internal communication is not correct, your horizontal external communication is not going to be correct. Lastly, we talked about character. We talked about communication. 
I would be remiss not to talk about compassion. There are people who believe you have to be this hard-nosed, cutthroat, I'm only in it for the money, and I don't care about the people kind of person to become a successful entrepreneur. Fewer things could be further from the truth. I believe that the master key to building something enormously impactful and profitable is you have to love the people you serve so much that you never sell them anything that would harm them. You have to use the money and love the people. Don't use the people and love the money. In fact, take it a step further and use the money to love the people. Are y'all tracking? I am telling you, these are personal skills that can make you a millionaire. But there, there, there are more personal skills. But if you get those three right, oh, you're going to be on the right track. There are personal skills, but there are also business skills. We'll do a video in the future on the business skills that can make you millions. I hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to like it, comment on it, share it, do all that stuff. You know that YouTube-y stuff. Y'all know how to do it. Do that thing. All right, stay blessed by the best. Peace out, Chris Scott.